Hey everyone, I'm Rick Baylord and welcome to Hope. You know, with the Super Bowl right around the corner, millions of people are talking about who's going to win. Which brings us to today's topic about life. How many of you like to win? Well, that's probably a stupid question because probably everyone, because no one wants to lose. Well, Paul picks up on this and says this in the scripture. He says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Notice what Paul didn't say. He didn't say, we need to run for fun. We need to run to finish, or we need to run to get a participation trophy. Paul didn't say any of those things. He said, we need to run to win. A great American, Ricky Bobby, said this in Talladega Nights. If you ain't first, you're last. If you wanna have the power to change, then you'll need to understand this important principle. You don't win by trying. Sounds confusing, right? Well, that's what we're gonna be unpacking, so hang on. Before we jump into that, did you know that when you hit the like, subscribe, or share button below, that you'll be able to reach more people and help us to reach more people with the news that they need? There's also three easy and safe ways that you can give so that the message of Jesus can continue to make a difference in people's lives. Now watch this and I'll be right back. Do you ever feel like that you're not winning in certain areas of your life? Maybe you feel like you're not winning spiritually or financially or maybe relationally. Maybe you feel there's areas of your life that no matter how much you try, you just can't win over. Like what you're eating or your exercise or that temptation that keeps getting the best of you. No matter how much you try to stay positive, negative thoughts keep winning the day in your head. Hey, I get what you're feeling. I've been there. I've done that. I've been there to the point where you seem like you just can't get ahead. Well, I want to pose a different way of thinking about change. This whole series on the power to change is about a paradigm shift. Because Lord knows we've all tried the old ways, the new trends, the latest gimmicks. See, this series has been about wrapping our heads around finding power through the one who created us and to see what he has to say about how to make changes in our life. Now, if you've missed any of these episodes, please check them out at the Hope Channel. We've talked about in this series that real and lasting change isn't behavior modification, it's spiritual transformation. We also learned how important is our identity when it comes to making the changes we want because you do what you do because of what you think of you. So based on these truths, we looked at just how important it is to attach a spiritual why, a spiritual who, we want to become and what holy habits will help us to succeed. See, anytime we start something new, it's a little awkward. I get that. And it takes more time at first, but I'm telling you, this will work. To end our series today, I want to give you two important things to take with you that will help you succeed and have the power to change. The first one is this, don't give up. Paul said, Remember these words? Why do I do the things that I know I shouldn't and don't do the things that I know I should? Then later he figured out that it was all about how much he was trying in, in his own power instead of relying and resting on God's power working through him. And he said these words after that. He said, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Paul knew about this valley of disappointment. When we experience this, when we start to create a habit and our expectations don't match up with reality. You've been there. You know, we're, we're expect, expecting this big change, this progress, and, but we're doing it in a linear fashion. And then it gets frustrating when we don't see many changes. And in the first week, we don't see anything. And maybe the month, we don't see anything. And it doesn't feel like we're going anywhere. We need to remember what Paul was saying. He was saying, listen, I, I need you to understand what I, I'm saying in this verse about change. Because the most powerful outcomes are delayed. 
In the book, The Atomic Habit, I told you about a couple weeks ago, they illustrate this phrase called Valley of Disappointment. And they illustrate it like this. This is one of the reasons why it's so hard to build habits that last because we make a few small changes, then when we don't see the tangible result, we decide to stop. You can start thinking, I've been praying to God to change the circumstances of my life and I'm not seeing anything. Or I've been going to the gym for the last week and nothing is changing. See, once you're in the valley of disappointment, it's easy to get good habits and have them fall by the wayside. And when you find yourself there, you need to remember the bamboo. Bamboo can barely be seen for the first five years as it's building an extensive root system underground before exploding 90 feet into the air in just six weeks. Habits often appear to make no difference until you get through the valley of disappointment and enter into a new level of change. So when you find yourself there, that's the time to gut it out, to not give up, because you will reap a harvest, as Paul says, if you hang in there and don't give up. Now, the second thing that I want you to take with you today is, that you need to remember is this. Stop trying and start training. When Paul wrote uh, Corinthians. He was in a city of Greece, and every four years, Greece would host the Olympic Games. And every two years, they would host uh, in uh, local competitions called the Is Ismian Games. And, and they would compete in chariot races and boxing and wrestling and, wait for this, poetry. Now, the first three I get because they're contact sports, they're exciting, they require mental and physical toughness. But how does poetry fit in there. I don't get that. Well, Paul was here in this city when he said these words, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. They were understanding what Paul was talking about. Notice he doesn't say run to finish, run to participate, run to feel good. He says run to win. Then he said all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Paul is saying, stop trying to pray. Stop trying to be more patient with your kids. Stop trying to get healthier. Why? Because you have to have a new mindset. You've been trying for too long. Trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment. Trying, is always, trying always gives you a way out. It gives you permission to fail. What would happen if Jesus had that mindset? If he tried to be the savior of the world, for example, he could say, you know, I tried. I, I, I really wanted to create a bridge between you and God so that, you know, your sins could be forgiven. I had good intentions, but between my schedule always kept uh, being interrupted me by, you know, by sick people needing to be healed and the religious people wanting to kill me. It was just too hectic, too difficult. I couldn't do it. See, training is wholehearted commitment to achieve a specific result. Maybe this is why scripture never tells us to try. Try to be godly. Instead, it says in scripture, instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come, Timothy says. Dallas Willard said, we are not trying to be different people. We're not trying, but what we are is training to be different people. See, when we choose to have a different mindset, we'll stop saying words like, I'm trying to have a better marriage and start saying, I'm training to have a great marriage. I'm trying to be a better parent versus I'm training to be a godly parent. Or I'm trying to get out of debt to I'm training to be a good steward of what God has given me. When I'm trying, I'm hoping to become something I'm not. But when I'm training, I'm getting better at what I already am. 
See, we need to stop trying and start training so that we can become who God says we already are. Based on who we want to become determines how we're going to train. Change is possible when we do it God's way. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for these words, these principles. May they ring true in our heart and in our soul. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us today, and I'll see you next week, either online or on campus.